Hello friends, my name's Miss Fletcher. Welcome to my classroom, a place where everyone is an artist and it's impossible to make a mistake. Today we're going to be learning all about our watercolor pans that came in our art kits. Let's go to the drawing board. So today you're going to need your watercolor paints. You're going to need a cup of water, a pencil, and the paper we're using today is from the construction paper pack in your, water, in your um, art kit. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open our paint up. And you can have a look at them and you're going to see that at this point if you touch any of them, there's going to be no color come off on your fingers um, because they're dry. And watercolor paints are activated by putting water in them. And also in here you have a brush. Now it's important with your brush, you'll notice there's a plastic tip on it, that you take this plastic tip off and then you don't want to push on the brush when it's dry, it'll break the bristles. You want to put it into the water to soften it. So go ahead and do that right now. And then after you soften it, you can wipe its sides and just set it down. We'll be using it in just a little bit. This plastic tip you can just go ahead and put in the recycle bin. We don't need it anymore. Now the first thing I think it would be nice to do today is just to see what our colors actually look like on the paper. So let's go ahead first and write the name of each word. So we're going to put red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and then um, outside of the rainbow, we also have brown and black. So let's put brown and black. Now when I want to activate a color, I dip into my water. I come into the color and I move it around and the water will come in and activate the paints that are in there. And now I'll be able to go ahead and paint and see what color that looks like. And I can dip in once or I can dip in twice if I want it to be a little bit brighter. Now I don't want to just go right into the orange at this point because I will then take my red paint into my orange paint and I want to keep it clean. So I go over to my water and I make sure I clean out my brush really, really well. And then um, once I do that, now I can move into my orange paint. So I come into my orange paint with a drop of water and I activate it. And now I can paint the orange. And if I want a softer orange, I will just go one time. If I want it to be a little bit more uh, vivid, I might go a little bit more. Now, once again, remember, we don't want to go right into our yellow. We first want to clean, clean, clean. Now that my brush is clean, I can move into my yellow paint. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to activate it with the water. And I can try out the yellow. We get a nice bright color. Now I'm going to, once again, I'm going to clean my brush. And it's okay if your water starts to turn, um, turn colors. There's not enough paint in there for you to really be able to affect um, the watercolor pan. So now we're going to move into our green. We're going to activate our green paint with water. We have a nice bright green. And once again, we're going to clean, clean, clean our brush. And we can move into the blue paint. We put the water in and activate it. And if I wanted to add some more, I can. If I want it to be a little bit darker blue, or I could leave it lighter. And once again, I'm going to clean my brush. Clean, clean, clean. Now into my purple paint. You'll notice this purple paint is actually pretty dark. I'm not going to do a double dip on that or it'll actually look more like it's a black instead of purple. Now I'm going to clean, clean, clean. So I have my entire rainbow now. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Now I'm going to move into my brown. And I can see what the brown looks like. And if I want a light brown, I would just do a little bit. If I wanted a darker brown, I could go in for some more. And then I clean my brush once again, and I'm going to come into my black paint. 
and it's a nice dark black and if I wanted it to be really dark this might turn a little bit gray I could add more in and then I clean my brush and it's normal for the water to be really dark at this point so we finish with our black we wipe our brush on its side and we can go ahead and set it down now we're going to learn about the different ways to use watercolors so we're going to go ahead and draw a line across and there are four different uh, main techniques with watercolors. The first one is called dry on dry. So go ahead and write that on your paper. And then on this other side over here, we're going to write dry on wet. And I think it might be nice to actually break our paper into sections. So let's go ahead and make a line halfway down. And let's do the same thing going horizontally as well. So we'll have a vertical line and a horizontal line, breaking up our paper into four equal parts. Now down in this section, we want to write wet on dry. And in our last section, oh, let me fix that a little bit. And in our last section, we want to write wet on wet. Okay, and we are ready to start painting. Well, let me move this up just a little bit. Okay, so when we do dry on dry, we're actually going to dip into our water. We're going to wipe it on the side. We don't want very much water in there. We really want our brush to be somewhat dry. Not completely dry, but we don't want it dripping at all. And uh, we also want our paper to be dry. So we have a dry paper and we have a brush that we've wiped off. Now we're going to go into a pan that we've already activated earlier. So let's go ahead and get some blue. And dry on dry, you can make thin lines, very clean lines. It doesn't run all over the place. I am needing a tiny bit of water, so I get just a little, little bit. But you'll notice I get very clean, nice lines. It's almost like a marker. Okay, so this technique is called dry on dry. We have a very dry brush on dry paper. Now our next technique is going to be called dry on wet. So once again, we want our brush to be really dry just like it was the last time, but this time we want our paper to be wet. The second word is always how the paper is. Okay, so this time I'm going to get my paper wet first. And then I'm going to dry my brush off and I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit more blue and you'll see the difference in how this line is. You'll see how this one starts to spread out. So this one stayed really clean, but this one you can see it starts to get soft edges. And when this dries, this paper is going to go back to white. Okay, so you start with a very wet paper, you take and make your paper soaked. Okay, and then you dry your brush off, you dip into your paint, and when you go on, it's going to spread out a little bit. Okay, so this is called dry on wet. Now this next one, we're going to do wet on dry. So the first word is our brush. We want our brush to have really wet paint, but we want our paper to be dry. So this time I'm going to dip into my water and let's take, keep going with the blue so you can see it each time. And I'm going to actually take and put some extra paint in or extra water in there. So now I have a brush that has a lot of water and paint on it. So my brush is really wet. So you can see when I do this, it makes a much thicker line. Okay, so this is called wet on dry. So dry on dry, the lines are going to be very thin and they're going to be more controlled. Wet on dry, they're going to be thicker. Okay. Now the last one is wet on wet. So you probably guessed we want to have a wet paper. 
then you get this wet. So I'm just gonna dip in and wet it, wet it, wet it. And I will tell you, this works better on the watercolor paper than it does on this construction paper, but we wanna save that paper for projects, okay? So we're just gonna to experiment today. So I've got my paper very, very wet, but now I want my paint to be really wet too. So I have a really wet brush with blue on it, and let's see what this does. So you see the difference with wet on dry, it stays much more controlled, but when we move to wet on wet, it really spreads out. So these are the four different watercolor techniques. We have a dry brush on dry paper. We had a dry brush on wet paper. We had a wet brush on dry paper and a wet brush on wet paper. When we're all finished, we're going to want to clean out our brush. We can put it back into our watercolor pan. And now our watercolor pan, we wanna leave it open until the paint dries. If you close it now, it'll um, cause the paint to crack. And um, it's just better for the paints if you allow first all of the moisture to leave before you close up the lid. All right. I hope you enjoyed learning about the watercolor pans. I'll see you the next time. Bye-bye.